Hello everyone, it's Matt M. Welcome back to my channel. I make clinical laboratory science content videos every single week. And if you are interested in that type of content, then consider subscribing to my channel, ring that bell to get notified, and yeah, let's get started. So I have been working for about... A year now? If you guys don't know, being a CLS is my first job. Ever! And as a newbie, you are prone to common newbie mistakes. Let me tell you, mistakes aren't fun, but they are a really good learning experience. After working a year, I definitely learned a lot. On this video, I will share to you guys the things I have learned after working one year as a CLS. So the first thing I learned as a CLS is that you should always wear your PPE. This is more true now on the age that we're living in. It would be best practice to wear your PPEs at all times. Lab gown, face shields, goggles, masks, everything. I remember one time when I was working, I had a ton of reagents on my hand I was walking. And then I laid them all on the table. I was just like mixing the reagents, preparing it so that I can load it on the instrument. And then when I was about to load the reagent on the instrument, I accidentally dropped it because someone came behind me and I didn't realize and then it spilled. Went to my lab coat. So my lab coat was like drenched. But the good thing about that is that I was wearing my lab coat. So my scrubs were dry and clean. My shoes that day were white and the reagent was yellow. Like a yellow stain on white shoes. That's not very forgiving. It's a good thing I was wearing waterproof shoes. So what I did was I just like rubbed paper paper towels on my shoe and then the paper towel didn't work so I dampened the paper towel with water and then I rubbed it again. It was sort of working. I did that for a while. Three minutes later, the stain went away. The best thing about that is that my socks were dry. That's amazing. Uh, recently, I purchased uh, goggles for my eyes because if you guys don't know, I wear uh, prescription glasses. It's a good thing to just have a layer of protection for your eyes. Just always wear your PPE at all times. So so the second thing I've learned is to decontaminate your station. It's not that you have trust issues, but you don't know the hygiene practices of the person who last used the computer that you'll be using. So it's better to stay safe and put on the effort of decontaminating your station. Best practice to decontaminate your station before and after your shift. Then I guess don't forget to wash your hands if you're working in the laboratory. Assume that everything is pathogenic and establish the habit of washing your hands frequently. So for the third thing I've learned is that nurses, physicians, other healthcare professionals, they will always, always, always call you tech. And if you encounter patients, they will always call you a nurse. Don't be offended. I mean, I was at first because, you know, you've worked hard to establish your license and be acknowledged for your own job title. But trying to change an entire norm of hospital culture is really hard. It's an uphill battle. Just know that in your heart of hearts, you actually are a clinical laboratory scientist. So for the fourth thing I've learned, it's that you should double check everything you do and what others do. So if you're in a setting like me where you work with lab assistants, it's best practice to double check everything before running the test because sometimes like the people processing your samples and the people that are logging in the samples are also human too. So they make mistakes because at the end of the day, you will be the person who will be calling the nurses, the healthcare professionals, the physicians that you made the mistake. There was a mislabeling incident in the laboratory. You are the captain of the ship. So save yourself the trouble and double check the labels. So before it gets resulted, you already caught the problem. So for the fifth thing I've learned, that is when you are in doubt, toss it out and repeat. If you're working in a setting like ours where we do manual blood banking, like sometimes you forget if you drop the clear reagents already. These are little things that you forget because sometimes you're running on autopilot and save yourself the trouble of second guessing if you did the right thing. So if you second guess yourself, just redo the test. A good tip that was given to me by my coworker, if you're doing manual testing, as much as possible, have a routine. So let's say you add the reagents first and then you add the patient sample. That's your routine. If that's your thing, you you will always remember to do that step first before doing step 
too so that you will have a low risk of having a mistake in doing manual tests. Doing this routine trains your muscles, it trains your mind that you won't doubt yourself after you did a certain test because you know you did all those things in order, you did not miss any step. So the sixth thing I've learned after a year of working is to look out for yourself. I guess this is directed in a way that if you're working night shift, you're the captain of the ship because in my laboratory, I get left alone from 2 in the morning till 7 till day shift comes in and I'm alone for 5 hours. So that 5 hours is scary for some people. At that time, there's just me and a lab assistant. That's the time where I have to build a certain confidence in yourself. If you're not comfortable releasing tests, let's say that the sample is hemolyzed. We know that hemolysis affects electrolytes, especially like potassium. Looking out for yourself is to know that it's time to recollect because when I was a new scientist, I was super shy that I was uncomfortable doing phone calls. But if you're night shift and you're alone, there's no other person that will do it for you. Look out for yourself and do it the right way. Build a certain firmness, build a certain confidence that you know what you're doing and you are not about to release results that you are not comfortable releasing because you know something can be done to it like a recollection it's not impossible call for the recollection and if they still don't just remember that you can always document everything just write it down on your results results were okay per nurse someone and then or physician someone because you know that accurate results come from accurate samples for the seventh thing I've learned after working in a laboratory that is to read procedure manuals and inserts I know everyone gets a rotation of training before they actually work on that certain department. Sometimes the thing that was taught to you by your preceptor is different from what the procedure manual is saying. So once you ask your preceptor again, they would be like, oh, that's the shortcut. If you feel uncomfortable doing that certain method, then just follow what the procedure manual says. Even though it's a longer way of doing a certain test, just know that it's better to do it the right way. You know that you should always look out for yourself, which is my previous tip. And sometimes there are like certain norms in the laboratory that some people do because they're already used used to it but if you know that there's a better and right way to do it then follow what the procedure manual is saying follow what the insert is saying because you know that this will eventually lead to more accurate and precise results so for my eighth lesson that i've learned after working a year that is to ask around there's no harm in asking around it's easy for me because i am the youngest in our laboratory and i ask other people how they would do a certain instance i talked about like oh so how do you normally do this how do you normally result that so other people will share their tips to you because we learn from each other in the laboratory you're not working alone there are times where there would be other people that you can ask around heck there might be something your lab assistant might know that you don't so don't be shy to ask around because there would come a day that the questions that you have asked your hypothetical questions that may have come up on random conversations would actually be your reality so if that comes then you know that you're prepared so for the ninth thing i've learned it's to document almost everything maybe you called for a recollection and then you did not document that you have no proof that something actually did happen so it's nice to document everything as much as possible especially if you're feeling like something was off or maybe if you're relaying a critical result and then like the physician or the RN doesn't want to take it because it's not their patient so it's nice that you can just document a certain idea on why you didn't do or did a certain thing because at the end of the day like when people look back at that certain moment and then they ask you and you don't know what to say it's hard to like try to remember what 
actually happened on that day but if you documented everything on your like lab notes or something you know that you have something that you can look back to and just leave on there as proof that you actually did something about that sample so this would be the last thing I've learned last year was a year of reflection because I don't know sometimes I have this mood where I just like sit there and reflect and I just write it down on a piece of paper and these are things that should be told to the people who would like to start a profession in our field these are things that are common sense for some but sometimes it's not common sense if you're actually in that situation you forget what common sense is if you have this video to look back on it's a good reflection of what I've learned after my one year of working so that was a really long build up to number 10 so number 10 is to accept mistakes yes we are human yes we make mistakes and it's best to know that you have your limit sometimes there are moments where you just messed up and nobody likes someone who gets defensive once they're given constructive criticism or just criticism in general know that sometimes you are not always right know that you have room for improvements know that there should always be growth in your career growth in the way you handle situations and growth in the way you deal with other people at the end of the Day, these are the people that you would be working with these are the people that you have to learn to work with so learn to accept your mistakes and accept it with a gracious heart yes accepting your mistakes may be a hard pill to swallow but remember there is always a rainbow after the storm so those are the things that I've learned after a year of working as a CLS and if you would like to see more of this type of content clinical laboratory science content then consider subscribing to my channel give this video a thumbs up because it would really help my channel grow comment down below if you have some more video content ideas that you would like me to do thank you for watching everyone don't forget to wash your hands and i will see you on the next one bye